July 28th, Tuesday. Been a while since I made a video. I haven't been making as many videos. You know, the summertime, everything gets busy, a lot of things to do. Got the two new dogs, you know, they keep me busy. Makes it hard to go anywhere. Um, pretty nice out today. A lot of rain to the south of us near St. Louis. There's, they've gotten a lot of rain. This weekend, I'll be in St. Louis Saturday for the um, Road to Ruta Road Show. Bix Weir and the gang and the crew. Sounds like Scooby-Doo. The gang weren't for you meddling crypto people. We would have collapsed this system. As you unmask them, you know. So, um, yeah, Bix Weir. Go to the road to Ruta.com. Road to Ruta.com. I've got it linked on my website, ClintWestwood.net. I think I do. Yeah, it's on the Happy Hour Road Show link at the top. Um, but you can get your tickets at RoadToRooted.com. He's going to be Saturday, I think, 4 to 7 p.m. Bix is going to be there playing music. And great time. I'm telling you, it's it's always a great time. We went to the one in Phoenix. Uh, Lisa and I went to the one in Phoenix. It was, um, man, there's probably like 140 people there. That was a pretty good event. And um, so he, he has a great crowd that comes out. So if you want to meet like-minded people who are into sound money, into crypto, into silver, into, you know, all those things that pull down that vampire system, uh, go check it out. This is right in Bitcoin's Bitcoin Ben's backyard to St. Louis. So I'm sure you'll get a cameo appearance. I'll be there. Um, Mitch, Magic Mitch, I'm sorry, uh, Motivational Mitch, he's going to be there. You can go check out his videos, uh, Mitch's Motivational Monday. I've got it linked off my website, clintwestwood.net, community resources. Um, he's going to ride along with me, and we're going to go down there. And it's 4 to 7 p.m. on Saturday. It'll be a good time. Um, it's always fun to see a lot of different crypto people. Uh, people are, you know, it's not just crypto. It's about watching my balance here. You know, I'm kind of on a little bit of a slope, you know, not in game shape here for making the videos. Um, but it's, it's about all the, the idea of freedom and that's really what it is. It's an idea, but with that idea, you have to, you know, make it a reality. So you can put it on paper for, as a constitution, you can say, oh yeah, this is, these are your rights. You know, these are our rights and we're enunciating them on this paper, this parchment. And it doesn't mean anything unless you can back it up. And that's really what it came down to. You know, these people gave up their their lives, their fortunes, estates, everything. I mean, they, you know, put it all on the line because they believed in that that concept of freedom and liberty. So it wasn't just words on paper. It actually was breathed into life. And that's really what happens. You can write a story and you can come up with, you know, all these great ideas. Thing is, if you can't implement them in real life where we live, and now granted, you know, spiritually, we're all over the place and beyond this, you know, we're in different places, but right near, right here, right now, where we're at, it is, um, you know, it has to be applied. We have to act it out. We have to do it. If we don't, then it doesn't get done. And so those words on paper, those intentions are, um, they need to become reality. And that's, that's what this, uh, these meetups are about. Uh, you know, you can sit around and be on YouTube and Twitter and, watch videos and you know it's great because it, it's an educational tool but at some point you you have to have that calling i think we all do at some level and it's just having the guts to stand out it's having that having the just that just making that next step because you know we can watch these videos all day long and resonate with people and and say hey yeah i like what clint westwood thinks but if you don't do anything about it, you know, and it's as simple as just getting out and saying something to somebody else or meeting people and going to a meetup and making a connection with somebody because that's going to lead to a greater, um, you know, it's going to lead to, you know, maybe an instance where you two can collaborate and do something that's greater than, you know, you ever could have done individually. It doesn't matter because the universe has a way of if you inact, if you act out, if you take a step, the universe rewards you. That's really what it comes down to. And so you can think about it all day long. Just thought about that. Mitch made a video like that Monday. That was his video. You can think about it and think about it. But if you don't actually just do it, then it doesn't happen. So it, it's very important to, to take action in some way. To, you know, take that belief system, you know, those words on paper, that doctrine, that manifesto, that constitution, and actually breathe life into it, into this world in which we find ourselves, in which we live. 
breathe into it you know it's like it's one thing it's just talking about a good cigar it's one thing to have a good cigar and puff on one this one's not too bad it's the cao uh, brasilia which i like those and they're pretty affordable it's a good flavor and it's it's just a good solid cigar you know it holds together well nice and tight wrap and so it's it's pretty you know it's a decent cigar cao brasilia i like the cao flatheads the big old fat cigar it's got some good flavor to it as it burns um, anyway, I digress, but it's about real things is what it comes down to. It's about real things ultimately. And so my point is, you know, if you get a chance to go to one of these meetups and Bix Weir, I've been to a lot of meetups. Um, and what Bix does and what the Road to Ruta crew do, um, they put together a great show. They take it seriously. I mean, I mean, I help them set up in Phoenix before the show and getting everything ready and i mean it's you know things got to get done and put together and you know thought out and tables get moved around chairs get moved around the whole thing gets rearranged and you know you've got four people doing that and to bring it together you know they don't take it lightly you know they want to put on a good show they want to make it entertaining want to make it so that um it's a great event a great meetup for anybody who goes i mean Think about this, you know, they're going on the road for, I don't know how many events, six, seven events, and they did it before, and now this is the second leg this year, and, and to go to these different towns, to live out of an RV, to, you know, break down, set up, and, and you know, talk about cryptocurrency and put on a show, the music, and, you know, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, it, it's, you've got to be dedicated to it. You've got to believe in it. So... I have a, a tremendous respect for Bix Weir and his whole family because they they get out and they do it. They actually take action and try to bring a message of truth and uplifting message us to you know get, inspire us to make us look at ourselves and say you know what I I can do something you know, I can get out there and it's just you just take that first step and just show up in an event. I mean I don't know how many times. How many times people have said, I should have oh, I should have gone to that event. It wasn't that far away. And you didn't do it. I mean, don't miss out. I'm going to be in St. Louis this Saturday with Mitch. I'm going to be going to the road show. Going to see Bix Weir. Road to Ruta show. And get there. If you can, get there. You know, it's a three-hour drive for me, and that's like one of the shortest drives I've ever had to a meetup. Unless, you know, it's in the, in the local area. But it's, you know, it's it's so worth doing it. Um, you'll walk away invigorated. You'll walk away feeling glad you came. Every time I go to one of these, that's what happens. You know, I have this conversation. I'm broken record. Uh, you probably heard it before. Every time I go to one of these events, I meet somebody and I'm like, man, I'm glad I came because I came for that purpose. Person, you know, for that purpose. You know, I feel like when I walk away, it's like I I was meant to meet that person. And that person felt the same way. I was meant to be here, not necessarily meet Clint Westwood, but, you know, to come to this meetup and validate who I am. Because, you know, I try to talk to people around here about cryptocurrency and I can't do it. My family doesn't listen to me. You know, I, you know my friends I talk to at work, you know, I'm trying to get excited about cryptocurrency and what it can bring for humanity and, you know, the power of holding your own money in your own possession. And I'm excited. And, and then I try and talk to people and then pff, nobody wants to hear it. And, and so that's the story I get over and over again. And then they come to these meetups and I say, my gosh, there are people like me. There are people who think the same way as I do. And it's like, yeah, we're a minority, but you know, the, the solid, strong, dedicated minority, those are the ones, those are the people who sacrifice everything and, and make change happen and usher us into new systems. That's why it's so critical right now with everything falling apart I mean, look at it every day. All you gotta do is look at a headline. Go to zerohedge.com and and just look at look at the laundry list of all the things that are going wrong. You know, housing, you know, is rolling over. Um, you know, the cost of housing starting to roll over and go down. And inventories are getting a little bit heavier, uh, and it's it's just you know interest rates are going up. Yeah, I saw this. You know, those of you who were paying attention back in. A little story. All right, I'm going to digress a little bit. But the housing market, you know, why I think it's rolling over. I see the same things that happened back in the, really start with 9-11. That was kind of a collapse moment in the economy. You know, the stock market crashed. I mean, it was it was coming down off the tech bubble and it hadn't recovered yet. And then you have 9-11 hit. 
in September of 2001. Really tanks the economy, shut the markets down. Oh, uh, you know, okay, what do we do? We got to inflate. So what do they do? They come out and they start pump, pumping money, pumping money, pumping money. And it leads to a resurgence in the, in the stock markets. But what it did, it created this giant housing bubble. And it was, um, I mean, it was ridiculous. I remember, you know, back in 2005, the housing was running up, especially in the Florida area. I have a uh, had a boss who said, you need to move to Florida. You need to move to Florida. Oh, it's the best time to move to Florida. Oh, my house, you know, has tripled in value since I bought it a few years ago. And, you know, this, you get caught up into this mindset that, well, it can only go up. There's only so much land to go around. There's only so many houses, you know, and, oh, you know, and it's just, you kind of, you build all these myths up in your mind. Then you see this with the crypto market. Oh, you know, it's going to go to this, that, you know, there's only so many of them. Uh, and eventually stuff does go up, but there are times of exuberance when things go way up and everybody's talking about it. And back then you had people getting loans for two, three houses and they're flipping them, holding on to them and then selling them because the price just kept going up. Well, how did that happen? Well, it's because there was so much money being allowed to be issued into the system that everybody could go out and get a loan. It didn't matter if you had a job or not. You know, was, there was a no income, no, what was it a ninja loan? Isn't that what it was? A no income, no job application to where you just go in and, ah, here, here's the money. And they create that out of nothing. The banks create that out of nothing. They just, oh, $500,000 for a house. Here you go. And then that becomes money in the system that gets used for all kinds of other things. Well, at some point, you can't pay back the loan. You're seeing that right now again. Well, you can't pay back the loan, then it starts to unwind, and it doesn't happen overnight. We got a crop duster going by, you can probably hear that. Might be able to get it in the background shot here. We'll see as it goes over. Yeah, you're probably gonna see him. But you've got a... Right over my head. Follow me around all day, this plane, I tell you. The helicopter's next, the black helicopter. We'll see if he shows up in the video. I don't know if he can see him or not. No, he turned. But you definitely can hear him. I'll probably get dusted. But uh, but you had a uh, you had a situation where everybody's leveraged out, everybody's getting as much money as they can, and it's just getting created. It's getting created out of nothing. There's nothing backing it, nothing stopping it. So everybody's buying a house, you know, that's a thing to get into. Well, then when people can't make their payments anymore, when, you know, it's tapped out and there's no more buyers, then it starts to roll over. Then you have other issues in the economy. Oh, this is a little unshaky, you know, and it, and it starts rolling slowly at first and then all of a sudden it crashes. In 2005, six, you started seeing it starting to roll over and you saw all the signs happening. Um, and then by seven, you had Wall Street being affected, 2008, Wall Street's being affected. You know, and it, it's Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers start crashing. I mean, these derivatives start falling apart and, and the whole thing unwinds itself. Because you've got to service all that debt. You got to keep paying on that debt. So you need more and more money to service that debt. And at some point it stops. And, oh, wait a minute, my house isn't 500,000. It went to 1.5 million. Oh, wait, now it's down to a million. Now it's down to 600,000. Oh shoot, now it's 400,000. I'm underwater, I'm not paying for this thing. You know, and you stop making payments. And you see that with, um, you see that in Russia right now with the Evergrande situation, people aren't gonna make the payments, you know? Why am I gonna pay on this house when it's not worth what I owe on it? Screw that, I'm just gonna squat, <coughs> squat in it. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna squat in it until, uh, until I can't make the payment or uh, they come and get me, you know, cause I'm not gonna make a payment. You know, and here in the United States, it can be, you know, a year and a half before they get you out of the house or the banks, you know, send the sheriff to repo, you know, the house or kick you out. So, coming by for another pass. So, you know, as that unwinds, you know, all of the, the fluff, all of the things that were, um, that was a little scary, all of the things that were um, put into place to leverage it up, start bringing it down. And, you know, credit goes to crap and you know, everything falls apart. So I'm starting to see that now, the beginning edges of it to where, okay, housing is unaffordable. You know, what you make, does you're not able to make the house payment. Cars the same way. They've been so overpriced. The market's been just so upside down that I don't think you're going to have to wait very long now. 
could be six months, might be a year. But at this point, what is that? It doesn't matter. So if you're properly positioned, you're gonna be able to get that car pretty cheap. The problem is, at the same time all of this is happening, they're raising interest rates, making it harder to get money, the capital that you need to pay these things off. And the price of fuel goes up, energy goes up, the cost of food goes up. All these things start going up, so it's just bleeding you of all your money. But see, they created the situation, and now they start to pull the plug on the situation just when you need the money the most. Not that the debt-based system's good, but in order for it to function, it needs more debt. And that's just the way it is. And so that's why I'm more, just give me something in my hand that I can hold. Something that I can have in my own possession. Give me, you know, whether it be you know, a freaking cigar, whether it be a bottle of whiskey, you know, whatever it is, which still alcohol is underpriced compared to other things that have gone up. It really hasn't seen the giant surge. I've seen it going up, but I mean, that's a barter item. You know, if you've got food, you know, a bunch of cucumbers right now, there's, everybody's got cucumbers all over the place. Well, you know, if you can store those up, you know, and pickle them and do something with them, you know, so that you can have them later, freeze them, freeze pickle them, uh, can them. If you can do those things, that kind of puts you in a better position. And, and so, and you have it in hand. It's something that you could actually, it's something you can actually use and use as a barter item as well. Now you don't have to drink whiskey, but a lot of people do. So, you know, they want to get over their depression, you know, and drink it a present uh, to get over your depression. But that's something you can use as a barter item. So it's, it's good to, you know, just just take stock of your stock and if you can afford to get something that you have in your possession that's not a debt-based instrument something you can use as money as fuel you know food then do it now's the time to do it because gosh I, you know this could spiral out of control you could you're gonna have the fed raising rates this week in the midst of a recession which we're in and the white house is trying to redefine what a recession is well it's not two consecutive quarters of negative growth no it's it could be, but yeah, this time is different. And so they're going to do everything they can. And then you've got an election coming up. So, I mean, they, they're probably going to do everything they can to stimulate the economy <clears throat> to get it, you know, at least, you know, give some goodies, cancel student loans, you know, whatever it is to kind of get through to the elections and hopefully maintain power, continue to maintain power. So they're going to pull out all these tricks. At some point, they're going to have to hyperinflate. They're just going to have to print money that keep things going or they let it fall and they let it collapse and at that point you know we got to figure out what we're doing next we got to figure out you know where we're going to be what we're going to use and that's why it's so important to be in something like sound money and so there's sound forms of money like gold silver you know in the old school way of thinking that that are that are good and are always going to hold value but in a digital world which we are in the soundest form of money um digital money in my mind is litecoin and you knew that was coming, right? But Bitcoin is great. I mean, Digibyte's great. It's just that they don't have the kind of the, the perfect package that Litecoin has. Uh, Litecoin's fast. It's got a good um, store of, it's a scarcity, a scarce asset. So it's a store of value long-term. You just look at the trend and it's, it's eating dollars and it's got security, privacy built into it. Privacy, I should say, to where, you know, you've got Mimble Wimble, where nobody can see your transaction. You know, it's like, you don't be handing a stack of cash to somebody, you know, right out in public. No, I mean, that's the way it is with crypto. They can look at your pu public addresses right out on the blockchain. I mean, that's the great thing about the blockchain. It's very transparent. You know, there are some times you don't want everybody to see how much money you've got in your wallet or how much you're pulling out and giving to somebody else. And Mimble Wimble takes care of that on Litecoin. Bitcoin doesn't have that. Digibyte doesn't have that. Now it can be built in, but they don't have it. So right now the perfect form of digital money really is Litecoin, in my mind, in my opinion. I like that this doesn't go out like some of the other cigars. You know, it maintains a good burn. So I can ramble on and it's still going. And I'll be smoking a cigar in St. Louis uh, this Saturday. Make sure you come to this meetup. I mean, it's, it's gonna be a great time. I wanna hang out with you guys and gals. And just, um, just talk about crypto, talk about freedom, talk about everything, you know, I ramble on about, you know, on, on my videos. So it'd be pretty cool if you'd get there. It's 25 bucks for the ticket, I think. You go to roadtorooted.com, buy your ticket online, and, and you just show up, and then your name's on the list, and Lovely Amy will be checking you in. Um, and it's just, it's a great time. I mean, 25 bucks well spent. 
and we're basically it's, it's putting gas in the tank so we can get to the next town. I mean, it's really, you know, funding the operation just to go on the road. So it's cool that he wants to spend the time doing that and they want to take the time to do that for everybody and bring people together. That's the biggest, the biggest thing. So, I mean, hope you can get there this Saturday, July 30th. St. Louis, really Arnold, Missouri, Southern. It's like a suburb of St. Louis. It's gonna be a good time, I'm telling you, been to them. Um, but it's it's important at this time in, in history to, I think, hold possessions, you know, and have, have it in your possession. You looked at uh, the California Pension Fund right now, lost a bunch of money because they were investing in Russian assets. I mean, this is the largest pension system, uh, you know, fund in the United States. A lot of money. They control a lot of people's money. People are depending on this money to pay out when they retire. If it's not there because they may have made bad decisions and bad investments, it's not there. Pension funds can become insolvent. Then who pays you? You've given, you've relinquished. Not voluntarily, probably because, you know, it's part of your contract, you know, your firefighter, police officer, whatever it is, public worker. You know, that was just part of the deal. Yeah, you put it in this pension fund, we manage it for you. Problem is, when somebody's got custody of your money, doesn't mean they're going to manage it correctly. And especially when there's a lot of money, people tend to do things that benefit themselves. So what sweetheart deals get made? I mean, you look at the Teamsters, you know, when Jimmy Hoffa was running things, you know, yeah, there's a loan, you know, build a casino in Vegas, ah, you know, give a cut here and there. And it's just, when you're giving people your money, I don't care who it is. It's it's just it's never a good idea. Banks, they once you put your money in the bank, they can take that. You know they get become insolvent. They can use your funds. I mean, see that's the thing. None of this is your money. And when you wake up to that point, wake up to that fact that once you give it to somebody else, they can do whatever they want with it. And you're not going to get it back. You don't want to go sue for them, sue it. You know, and try and get it back. I mean, you know, in that process, it's better to hold it in your own possession. It's time to grow up. If you've got the opportunity to put it in your own possession, you better do it. You've got the, the ability right now, like no other time in history where you could hold it. It used to be, well, I gotta hold gold and silver and you know, bury it somewhere, put it in a safe, hide it, you know, you know, what am I gonna do with it? I gotta move it around. You don't have that issue with Litecoin. It's a portable asset. It's something you can hold in your possession. You write down 12 words, write down your private key, you've got it, nobody else has access to it. It's you, but it takes great responsibility. You need to put your big boy pants on and realize, okay, if I'm gonna work my whole life and think I'm gonna retire on all this money that I've saved up, all my energy that I gave to somebody else to get paid, and then you take that money and give it to somebody else and think that they're gonna pay you. I mean, all you've done is outsource your energy your whole life. At some point, you really gotta take a hard look at yourself and say, I should really be holding my own money, shouldn't I? And if I can't do it, and if I'm afraid to do it, I better be prepared for the consequences. Never before in history have you had the opportunity to be able to possess your own wealth. Cryptocurrency allows you to do that. Hold it in your own possession. You've got the private keys, nobody else can access that, only you. Great responsibility, but you know what? So's life. That's just one of the things we gotta deal with because nobody else is gonna take care of our money, our energy like we will. So it's important that we do that. Take custody of it. I mean, all you're doing is just playing in a vampire casino thinking, ah, you know, I'm, you know, I'll be able to cash out before the lights go out, you know, and then they all, we, they eat all of us. You know, it's like the movie in the desert with what? George Clooney and Cheech. What was it? I can't even remember it. It's, uh, they all turn into vampires and, you know, at this bar. I mean, that's, that's what happens. So, you know, you think everything's safe and you're just gambling is all you're doing. You're just gambling. That's why I call it a vampire casino. When you're using the fiat dollar, when you're using U.S. dollars, Federal Reserve notes, call it what it is. When you're using those things, you're just playing with artificial money that they control. And they can just print it up and blow up a housing bubble. They can withdraw it, raise interest rates, you know, and then pull the plug on it, take the asset back. And that's what they do. It's just a big game. It's rigged. It's rigged. So once you realize that and wake up to that, then you start making decisions and say, okay, what do I need to do? I've heard about this crypto thing. I've heard about silver. I've heard about gold. I've heard about this meetup that's coming up to where there's like-minded people. <coughs> there's like-minded people that I can... Uh, 
They're coming to get me, I'm telling you. No, it's so there's like-minded people that can give me some ideas. And, and, you know, hopefully we can share experiences, you know, and have enough confidence to say that, okay, you know what, maybe I shouldn't let somebody else hold my money. Maybe I shouldn't let somebody else hold my retirement. There are ways out. There are people who can help, give you a point you on the right path, you know, and say, hey, here's an idea, there's an idea, you know, and you got to do your own research and you got to, you know, you got to, you're on your own. I mean, you got to trust yourself. There's people can tell you and help you. I can tell you all day long, hey, this is probably the best thing to do. This is what I'm doing, but it doesn't mean you're going to do it. it. doesn't mean you should do it. You got to trust yourself and go with your gut. But man, given your money and all your labor and all your energy for everything you've done your whole life to somebody else and telling them, here, take it, figure it out. You know, just take care of me when I need to be taken care of. I think he might be doing this on purpose, but take um, take care of me, you know, and coddle me. And it's just, man, we got to grow up. We expect politicians to take care of us. We expect medical people to take care of us. And what kind of job have they done? They've done nothing but destroy us. They're vampires. That's all it is. At the end of the day, they're just vampires. And once you understand that, once you understand who the enemy is and identify the enemy, then you can make decisions accordingly. You don't play that game anymore. You got a president who's, you know, double pricked, double boosted, and still got the th same thing that those things are supposed to protect against. I mean, come on. I mean, at what point do you wake up and say, this is all a fraud? This is all a joke? I mean, absolutely just ignorance. Don't be ignorant. Don't lack knowledge. Gain knowledge. Identify the enemy. And don't play the game. That's all you got to do. You ain't going to go out there and, you know, fight and shoot and, you know, do all these things. Oh, and speaking of which, shoot. Hit Me With Your Best Shot by Pat Benatar. You know that classic? Never hit number one. I didn't realize that. It was like nine or something is the highest it got. But, you know, hit me with your best shot. Why don't you hit me with your best shot? You know, that song, she's not going to play it anymore because she's afraid it's going to be offensive because of all the, uh, the, the shootings that have gone on. And so this is what's happened. We've basically been neutered, our entire society. You know, any kind of art, any kind of music, anything that we want to, you know, in language, whatever it is. No, we have to change it all because people are sensitive now. You know what? I don't even care. That's your problem if you're sensitive. I just don't care. I really don't. It's like, I'm going to live my life and I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to say what I want. You can say what you want, but don't force your opinion on me. Don't force me to you know, educate, you know, your ways in the schools that I pay for. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it's just, that's the society you want to live in. This is the world we want to live in. At some point, you just say no. You find ways not to do it. You find ways not to fund it. You ignore them. Hey, you need to wear this mask everywhere you go. Eh, okay, that's great. You know, hey, you need to do this or you're going to lose your job. Eh, take these pricks. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll do that. You know, and it's just sad watching the people that have, have just followed along. And I mean, it's just, it's just, and the damage that's been done for what? To maintain your job so you can have that pension that's not going to get paid out. Basically, that's it. You know what? Take action now. Run the numbers again. This is just one coin. This is just Litecoin. I want people to get their head around this. You know, there's trillions of dollars out there, Federal Reserve notes out there, and they can print up tw trillions more as much as they want. There's only 84 million Litecoin. It's enough for 0 0.01 for everybody in the world. Point zero, one hundredth of a Litecoin per person. Quarter of a Litecoin per person in the United States, if you divide, you know, it's divided equally. But it's a worldwide currency. You can use it anywhere. Send, trans, send value, transfer value any time of the day, 365 days a year, 366 days in a leap year, all the time, never stopped running, almost 11 years now, October 13th, it'll be 11 years straight. Network keeps on running. It's pretty valuable. It's an amazing asset to have. If you can transfer your energy to anybody virtually, digitally, anywhere in the world like that, and have it confirmed on an independent network, on a blockchain, outside of government, outside of central banking, basically on its own. An idea, 
It's really what it is, a freedom idea, words on paper, code. These computers are running this code, this network, and they're all in agreement. I mean, there's no human intervention. There's none of this, well, I don't think you should send that transaction, uh, you know. No, it's all independent of that. That's why it's such a threat to the existing system. It's independent of that system. It's not running through a bank, getting cleared, getting flagged. It's not running through the government. Oh, you know, you can't do this. Nope, sorry. <clears throat> nope. You're, a, you're on a list. It's not the way it works. It's freedom money. It's money you can use anywhere you want. You can send value anywhere you want, any time of the day. Nothing can stop it. I've been doing that for over 11, almost 11 years. It's just, it's, it's time to realize what they've done to you. It's time to realize what they're going to continue to do to you. They're collapsing the system right now so they can build back better for them, not for you. Burning plants down, food processing plants, you know, putting a pinch on that supply chain, trying to starve you out. I mean, getting hit from every angle. Realize that you've got a way out. Realize that there is an opportunity. There's an opportunity to be able to possess your energy, do what you want with it. To me, it's Litecoin. There's other cryptos out there, but I'm not going to talk about many of them because I don't believe in them. Because I want something that stood the test of time, that's proven itself, that has a limited supply, that just works. It's Litecoin for me. Litecoin is the right coin, baby, as Bix Weir said. So come to this meetup. I want to see you all on Saturday, July 30th in St. Louis. Go to roadderuda.com, get your ticket. If you come there, and if you listen, there's a lot of silver people there. A lot of people, you know, who really aren't into crypto, that would like to get into crypto. Come to this meetup. If you don't have any crypto, download a wallet. I'll send you Litecoin right there on the spot. And you'll see how easy it is. And you'll fall in love with the idea of being sovereign and realizing I've got this in my possession. That guy gave it to me on a Saturday evening when the banks are closed and nothing stopped that transaction. Be there and I'll do that. I'll give you Litecoin. Give it to you. Just because I want everybody to experience that and know what it is and know how powerful of a tool it is. So I hope to see you there. Just come up and see me. I don't know who you are, but you know who I am because you see my mug, you know, yapping away on YouTube. Come introduce yourself. You know, leave a comment in this video. Say, hey, I'm coming to St. Louis. I know a couple of you have already. But, you know, come, just come see me and say, hey, I'm so-and-so and... -so and you know, and I'll forget your name, but you know, I'll remember your face, but it's just, um, just, just, I want to meet you. I want to meet you. I'll give you a big hug too. I usually do. I've kind of known for that. I might take you, you know, take you off guard a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. That's how we know each other. Feel that energy. But, uh, yeah, come on down, come on up, come on over. Let's have a beer. Let's, you don't have to have a beer, whatever you want to do. But I'd love to see you there. And like I said, you know, if you're not into cryptocurrency, I'll teach you how to download a wallet and I'll send you some Litecoin. All right. All right. I thank you for watching. This is kind of a longer video. I've rambled on a little bit. I just appreciate all of you for watching. And, um, you know, I just want you to trust yourselves. And hopefully if I've done anything, it's to inspire you to to really just believe in yourself. You know, if you've got something down in here that says, yeah, he's right about that. Yeah, you know, I'm, uh, just take that step, you know. Yeah, if if you're, your pension, you know, you get your money sitting in there and you've always worried about it and you're thinking, well, what should I do? What should I do? Hopefully I've given you some um, inspiration to kind of look at some other methods. But really it all comes down, it's on you. You have to make that decision. You know, you are the one who is responsible and you have to trust yourself and trust your instincts. Don't live with regret saying, I wish I would have, I wish I could have, but I didn't. All right. Trust yourselves. I hope to see you Saturday the 30th in St. Louis. Love y'all. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Always trust yourself though. It's the main thing.